It is good when a worthy person comes to power in every sense. The what to do if the ruler's tastes, including in the intimate sphere, differ from those generally accepted in society. In the XXI century, in democratic countries, the answer is quite simple. Gather information, prove it, publicize it, and wait for the political effect. But what if such a ruler appears in authoritarian country or even in the Middle Ages? To answer this question, I suggest you to familiarize yourself with the history of the Chinese emperor of the Ming dynasty of the Zvi century, Jiujing, against whom the famous conspiracy of concubines called Renian was planned as an attempt to get rid of months of torment caused by the specific tastes of the ruler. When Zhu Haozong first succeeded his cousin Zhejd on the throne in 1521 and adopted the new name Jiujing, many who had personally known the emperor before he ascended the throne shudder down pleasantly. Rumors of Zhu Haozong's peculiar tastes and predilections persisted in the halls of the Forbidden City, and few in Beijing would want to verify the reality of these behind-the-scenes conversations. Jiajing's very name can be translated as delightful tranquility. Indeed, in the early months of his reign, the emperor restrained himself enough to live up to the imperial name. But then he began to smoothly push his line by changing several fundamental dynastic customs, causing the first disgruntled orthodoxies who appear at court who disagreed with the new trends. The first public discontent was clearly expressed as early as the end of 1521. But the emperor did not tolerate the willfulness of officials and aristocrats from which he demonstrated his true nature, dealing with opponents' mass imprisonment in prisons. It can be said that from that moment, the delightful tranquility was interrupted and never began. The fact that the emperor had several wives and concubines is a standard phenomenon in China. The fact that none of the wives, except for the eldest wife empress, as well as none of the concubines could deny the emperor his wishes is a consequence of the divine status of the ruler. The fact that getting into the forbidden city, hundreds and even thousands of concubines found themselves in aggressive, powerless conditions, full of conspiracies, intrigues and betrayals, but got their chance to rise, also a well-known fact. So what made Emperor Jiajing different from other Chinese emperors? Jiajing, like many cruel rulers, was very afraid of death, so he became fascinated with Taoism and began to look for a magic elixir to acquire eternal life. And it was this elixir, or rather his search for it that became the cause of the Renian conspiracy. For together with the prominent Taoist monks and alchemists of the time, the emperor began to experiment exclusively on his harem. Of course, there was no elixir, and many specialists, who were under the emperor, knew it, but continued to bend their line only in order to get fabulous riches for their scientific work as long as possible. And the work consisted in the following collection of menstrual blood of innocent girls, which was processed in a special way for the reception of the emperor. That's why from all over China, in the forbidden city literally in droves brought manufacturers of this product. In addition, first, the girls brought in were fed exclusively on rainwater and mulberry leaves so that any excretions would be as pure and charged as possible. Second, some test subjects were deliberately abused and beat, as it was believed that the constant suffering they endured would energize the potion. Third, more and more often the abuse took place in the moments of sweet pleasures because the combination of pain and special, intimate energy was capable of creating certain compositions. Naturally, after such torture, the girls lost the most important quality and passed into the category of ordinary concubines with whom the experiments continued for the soul. The emperor trusted his asculapists and clergymen more and more and every week he became more and more involved in pleasant experiments. That is why 16 of the bravest concubines, tired of enduring fear, pain, and humiliation, conspired to terminate the life of the torturer in 1542. This happened in the year of Renian, the 39th year of the 60-year cycle from which the conspiracy got its name. When the emperor entered the chambers of his beloved wife Dwin and was resting alone after doing his business, 16 brave girls burst into the room. Having no weapons, but using their collective strength, they were able to twist Jia Jing and pin him to the carpet. One of the concubines took a silk cord from a nearby curtain and pulled down the emperor's strong neck, but did not have the strength or skill to finish the job. The emperor only fainted, causing the concubines to scatter, happy with their success. Jia Jing remained unconscious until the next afternoon, and no one dared enter the chambers to disturb the emperor's rest. At this time, one of the conspirators, who had not participated in the attack, gave in to fear and told Empress Fang. 
The emperor was found and rescued. All of the female conspirators die imminently, and one of the most cruel executions of modern times was chosen. Death by a thousand cuts, about which it is time to write a separate article. In addition, Fang took advantage of the situation and eliminated her longtime rival Duan, in whose chambers the assassination attempt took place. Jia Jing himself was so afraid of the conspiracy later that pathologically did not trust his cronies, so for two decades of his truly gruesome rule gained fame as one of the cruelest rulers of China. However, he did not meddle with his experiments with concubines anymore. He was afraid of repetition.